Hello. Welcome to Jason Newland. <laughs> ah, start again. Hello. And welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. Finney's eating his dinner and he's got his bum stuck right in the air. And yeah, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is Let Me Boy to Sleep and it's Thursday. You know what I thought I might do? Because I had like a, a thing, a healing Thursday thing going on. And that's before I got a little bit. I don't know what the right word. I, I kind of lost my motivation for a, for about a week. And now I'm back. I'm still waiting to get my motivation for the uh, <laughs> the study, the study. So anyway, I've got a Facebook group, Jason's Boring Group or Jason Newland's Boring Group. You can join if you like. A good place. It's a good place to ask me questions, especially for the Q and A Friday. I have been upgrading the website again today and I've got a new design well, it's not a new design it's, it's still the same but it is a new design what I'm gonna do whenever I get a new recording when I release a new recording I'm gonna put that on the first page on the front page of my website so at the moment you've got Uh, yesterday's recording 1,233 so let me boil you to sleep so that was the title so so there's a picture of the podcast it's a monkey studying in a library that's supposed to be me and then there are there's play. there's actually embedded recordings that you can listen to on the actual website there is one without music five hours ten hours then you've got oh I just realized it doesn't I need to put a, a yeah I need to change that I didn't realize on the mobile phone it's not given the, all the information so you got one with music, one five hours of music, ten hours of music. And then below that you got the links. Which perhaps that's what I should do, put those links above the recording. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll rechange it. So they're direct links. And then below that you've got the playlist of all the latest recordings. Right. I've got the window open, but Vinny's uh, decided to start barking, so hopefully he will calm down and I'll be able to get on with the recording. And hopefully there's no one outside the front door knocking, wanting to get in, so they can wait for someone to turn up. I don't need that tonight. I don't want to be disturbed. Mind you... I don't know what time that was yesterday that it happened. Let's have a look. I look at my uh, phone camera. Not my phone camera, my door camera. You know, it's really weird. I, I got this thing. Oh, that's weird. Oh, blimey. Just look at the side of my face. It's not good. Just look at the camera, I'm just like, what's going on with my... I'll get rid of the sound. 
Oh. Oh, that's weird. It's just a strange kind of look. Okay. I'll take a picture. I wonder what that is. Vinny? Oh, sorry. Sorry, mate. Why did you headbutt the phone? Strange. Oh, no, it's just my beard. It's weird, because now my beard... So, there's a side. My hair's dark. Not completely dark, but it's, it's dark. Not totally dark, but it's, you know, it's dark. It's getting greyer at the sides. But my beard is definitely getting greyer than my hair. And you could argue, but that is hair, isn't it? I know it's hair, but the hair on my head... Well, the beard's on your head also, isn't it? I know. Let's just not get too pedantic. You're pedantic. So, maybe it's time to go bald again. <sighs> I've had got quite a few questions for Q&A Friday, which is tomorrow. So I've got quite a few questions to answer. If you've got any other questions, please do ask. Because... Tomorrow's quite a big day. It's the uh, Tyson, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul boxing. Early hours of the morning, Saturday. You know, I, I really want Mike Tyson to win. But I don't see how he could. I think the only way that it's going to be palatable is if they fix it. And they just decide to, Jake Paul decides to just, like, not get too involved. Because when, when Tyson, when Mike Tyson fought Roy Jones a few years back, part of their deal was Mike Tyson wasn't really supposed to punch Roy Jones in the face. He punched him in the stomach, in the, in the body, and he hurt him. But it, it, you know, it was Roy Jones punched Tyson in the face and couldn't hurt him. <laughs> he's like just bounced off his head, didn't hurt him at all. But he was hurting Roy Jones with the body punches. I think he broke a couple of ribs, if I remember rightly. I mean, I didn't have my X ray machine pointing it at the television, but that's what I remember, if I remember. But that was an exhibition. And I'm thinking this should be an exhibition, not an actual proper fight. Because a 59-year-old against a 27-year-old, it's just, it doesn't matter what the 59-year-old did previously. It's just, it's not fair. Because you've got, so there's a lot of people online going... Yeah, Mike Tyson, he's going to win, he's going to knock it, it's, it's like he's going to win so easily. He's, it doesn't work like that, I don't think. Now, guaranteed, anyone, you know, if anyone started on Mike Tyson at any age in his life, even when he's 70, 80 even, if they didn't know who Mike Tyson was and they were being rude to him, he could knock out anyone. You know, if they were standing there, he could knock them out. But if the person's prepared, that that's a different thing, because, I mean, my granddad, he was a boxer in the army. Uh, won multiple medals. He was a champion in the army because he was in the army I think from the age of 16 to 16 to 28 I think he did 12 years and then he left the army and then a year later the war started the second world war and he he never he never kind of carried on the boxing 
when he left the army. As far as I know, I don't think because he he went straight into family, and then he was when he got out of the war in forty five. He had a one year old boy, and then ended up having two two daughters and two more boys. So, yeah, therefore he was. I'm trying to not say so now. So he. Uh, he didn't really have time. Apparently, he, he tried to take up smoking a pipe, but couldn't afford it. Yeah, he, he smoked a pipe for about a week, and it was just too expensive. And that's when tobacco didn't cost nothing, hardly. You know, so I think... Oh, yeah, the reason I'm talking about him is when he was about... He was seventy. He was about seventy, maybe seventy-five, and he was on his bike. And I'm not quite sure what happened because my nan told me. But he came. He, I think the the car. I think there might have been like a near a near crash between my granddad on his bike and a and a man in his car, some young man. So the man got out of the car and started being aggressive towards my granddad, and my granddad flattened him, just knocked him spark out. So and my granddad was a man of few words; he wouldn't say that happened if it hadn't happened, you know. It wasn't really one of those, it wasn't flash. He told my nan, probably hoping that she wouldn't she, that she wouldn't tell anyone else, just in case perhaps the police turned up or something. He never mentioned it, he never he only said I had two conversations with him, I think the whole time that I knew him. He didn't didn't really have conversations with me. Which is a shame because I love boxing and he could have taught me to box when I was a kid. I mean, we used to play on his, um, he had this stand up box thing, boxing bag, like a boxing ball, and you'd stand on it and it'd come back to you. So it's, um, I've got one in my bedroom, but it's different. It's got a big weight with water inside. But he had that and he had, he had proper leather boxing gloves as well big old brown ones we never talked about it and I think it was only after he passed away my nan got out all of his stuff you know uh, his medals the cups the pictures photographs and stuff of him you know with his uh, cost not costume with boxing stuff on and he was, he probably would have been about a welterweight, probably about 10 stone, I imagine. I think he was about 11 stone when I was, when I was older, when I was a kid. But I think he probably might have been lighter than that if he was training. I don't know. Lightweight, welterweight, lightweight. So, a boxer, there's something, I, I, I learned this years ago, I forget what it's called, there's something where you've got, um, it's not just about muscle memory, but I did this, part of my first degree, I did an essay on, oh, what's the name of it, I forget the name of it, but it's, it was about... Oh, it was about dementia, but it was about having certain memories that were just there, that stayed with you, that were just automatic memories. So things like, he 
if you've been doing something the, the same day, you know, every day for years and years and years, like doing your shoelaces up, uh, turning the light off, doing maybe even making the bed, just things that sometimes people would, that didn't have their full mental faculties anymore were still able to do because it was just all automatic. There's a word for it. I can't remember what the word is. I'm going to look it up. I wonder if it's available. Uh, uh, okay, just to see if it's... If I can think what it is... No, nope. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Well, one of the things there was a story, and it was about an ex-boxer, and he was in a dementia ward. Lovely bloke calm you know wasn't aggressive at all but he'd pre you know he was previously been whether a professional or an amateur or whatever but he'd previously been a, a boxer for quite a long time training at least and a new member of staff started it was um it was like in a care care facility. So this new member of staff was being introduced to Reggie or whatever his name was. He said, this is Reggie. I said, oh, I'm Tom. And the other, the other care worker said, oh, Reggie used to be a boxer. So Tom went, oh, you feel a boxer? And he kind of put his hands up, like pretending to box. And Reggie just knocked him flat out. Because that was just his automatic response. Didn't even know he'd done it. Just automatically did it. So that could be what happens with Mike Tyson. It could automatically, mind you, might automatically bite it, bite Jake's ear off. So it could go either way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to be controversial, whatever happens. It'll be controversy because you got, well, there's no bigger, no more controversial boxer than Mike Tyson back in the day he was you know one of the most controversial boxers ever and Jake Paul arguably you could say he's the most controversial boxer now because of how he is building up to fights and the stuff he's done outside of the ring and that so maybe yeah I reckon it's going to be controversial hmm he's munching on a bone so he's happy <sighs> oh what was I going to say I was going to say something but I forget what it was so I, when I first started this like right now I mean I went to press the timer or the stopwatch I just like to keep track of roughly how long I'm doing but I didn't turn it off yesterday, so it's over 50 hours since I last made a recording. But that doesn't make sense, because I did one... I couldn't have timed it yesterday, could I? It must have been the day before that I timed it. Yeah, yeah, otherwise it'd be 24 hours, and I definitely did one yesterday. So I'm quite pleased with the website, kind of. I'm not sure. I'm still listening to vod, uh, to uh, audiobooks for psychology. Audiobooks. Oh, I tell you what. This bugged me today. I, I don't know if, if you remember, I mentioned I've been watching 
The Last Man on Earth. It's a TV show, kind of comedy show that's been on. It was on between 2014 and 2017. And four seasons. Now, I knew I was getting near the end. So I watched, I watched all four seasons back to back, pretty much. I knew it was coming to the end, but I didn't realise it was at the end. And they left it on a cliffhanger. I'm so annoyed. Honestly, they left it on a cliffhanger where anyone that was enjoying watching it wants to know what happens next. And I don't like that. And I realise that sometimes TV shows end on a a little bit too much of a closing. You know, I mean, some of the bigger shows of the last 20 years, let's say, have ended with the same, you could say the same thing, everyone dies, you know? Like, like everyone kind of, gets killed in the show, pretty much. Not everyone, but a hell of a lot. I don't want to spoil the plots for any of the shows that you might not have seen that I'm talking about, so I won't. So you've got Game of Thrones, Sopranos, Breaking Bad, The Wire. And there's a lot of shows that are classed as some of the biggest shows in the, you know, the most, the best shows that have ever been made. I also class True Blood as well because I love that. Love True Blood. I did. I've got a little. There's a little. It's vampires. I can't help it. I loved. I loved it. Some of these shows, they go. What I've noticed is they start to go off. After like third, fourth season, they tend to go in a weird direction. I mean, Lost started to introduce things like polar bears in the jungle and uh, underground bunkers and a steering wheel that can turn an island round. It got a little bit. It got a little bit weird. A little bit weird. It was weird to start with, but it got a little bit weird. I, I hope I haven't spoiled it. I won't have done, because by the time you get to those bits, you'll have forgotten what I'd said. Unless you're about to just watch that episode and like, oh my God, I didn't know there was a steering wheel. I didn't know there was, it was all controlled by, (laughs) out of a car, out of a mini. The same as with Breaking Bad, it's, it's almost you could see if you watched them, in hindsight, you can almost see that they had a really good idea. And they put a lot into the first season. And then they got, you know, it, it was popular. So they got another a contract for another season. Or maybe another two seasons. And they had more money, the bigger budget, and they could be more creative. And yeah, so they did even more bigger things. And then they got a contract for another three years or three seasons. And I imagine at some point, all of these shows were sitting in a room. You know, the the writers were sitting in a room thinking, "Um, what do we do now? What do we do now? Is it like we have to? St- we've just been offered ten times more money, and we've got a budget as big as a, a blockbuster movie. We can do anything we want, but we run out of ideas. It's got yeah. That's kind of seems like that. Almost, they do come up with the ideas in the end, but I just wonder. And that's why Ricky Gervais said that he only ever did two or three seasons of what his his shows. 
doesn't overdo them. And... Yeah, but it doesn't leave cliffhangers either. Don't leave a cliffhanger. I mean, you could... I'm not going to say what happened with the ending of Sopranos. Although it did end like... Wow, well, what? 15 years ago? 13 years ago? So I'm not going to spoil that by talking about that. But I guess that was a cliffhanger. Kind of. How did Game of Thrones end? I'm not going to. I'm not going to say how it ended. I mean, definitely, there was no like. You know, the Sopranos. I was like, it's a midnight to living in a final world, and then a da da da, it going on and on and on and on. That one, that song. I love that song ever since that, that show. It's weird. I mean, I don't remember hearing that song previously. I had heard it, but I don't remember it ever meaning anything. And then it became meaningful to me. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's a Game of Thrones. Yeah, that was a good ending. I like the Game of Thrones one. Breaking Bad. I was disappointed though, to be fair. With with the Game of Thrones, I was disappointed. I was. I wasn't angry, for those that know what happened, I wasn't angry with her. I was just disappointed. <laughs> that stupid saying. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I don't know. What else? Breaking Bad. Yeah. That was only, that was never going to end well, was it? Let's face it. I mean, if you just look at the premise of the TV show, it, it was never going to end with a smile. You know, it, it, it was. Again, without spoiling it, it it just you know it was grim. It was a grim show, very clever but very grim, very very dark. Really, oh, there was there was things in that show that I just didn't like. Just just I didn't like what they did to the characters sometimes. <laughs> like, oh. Um, what other ones? I think I was thinking with my sleepy boring objects on Monday, maybe I will talk about the last man on earth and give you a synopsis and it'll be a spoiler episode. So I will spoil the entire show if you haven't watched it yet. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Hmm. I'm trying to think what other shows. You got The Wire. The Wire is quite clever. The way they kind of turned it around. So, yeah, I did. So I watched all these shows back to back. I I was watching. There was a period. I think we're talking probably during my university years. So three years where I didn't really have much in the way of a social life. I haven't done for since 2001. It's the last time I had any kind of real social life. As far as going out and... Well, that's not true. I did used to go out 2002, 2003... Yeah, I used to go out with sort of work colleagues and stuff in the evening and things like that at the weekend. But yeah, so this may be since 2004. I haven't really had a, like a social life. I would sit in the pub. So I guess that was kind of social life, but I didn't used to talk to the other people in the pub. 
I just sit there on my own. I mean, I remember I used to, I used to hear people uh, talking about. I got to know some of the people via listening to them chatting about other people, like the gossip, you know. And so there was uh, there was some bloke that worked on the railways. I don't know who it was, but someone was talking about it. And then there was. Oh, someone had a tag. Had like, so you had to leave the pub at a certain time every day because he had a like a tag on him because uh, it, it was like instead of going to prison, they put a, a tag on his ankle because that's kind of the equivalent, I suppose. And then um, other people, let's talk about, I think there was a, a gardener and there's some weirdo. I always talk about this weirdo. Some weird man that would just be sitting on his own. Just in there every day. Sitting on his own. Drinking like four, five, six pints. And not talking to anyone. Anyway, so I... Hmm. So what was I talking about? Oh, la, 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 la. I was... Bum, 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 bum. What other TV show? Oh, yeah. I used to go to Blockbusters and get the box sets. And the last year of university, I think it was the last year, I got the entire box set for The Sopranos and the wire and I'm thinking I might do that again in the future instead of streaming maybe start getting a collection DVD collection I know it's old school but maybe it's because I've watched uh, Last Man in the World and realised that there was no streaming. They had to rely on DVDs. So you need need DVDs just as a backup. Plus, can't you get those DVD players that have multiple discs so you don't have to keep getting up and changing the disc? Every, you know, like six hours. <laughs> wow. I might do that in the future. I mean, CD players or DVD players are really cheap now. You can get them for like 30 quid. I haven't had one for... Wow. I don't... Remember... I think I might have had a TV DVD player when I moved in here. It's possible. It's very likely that I did. I don't completely remember. Yeah, because it was a portable TV. It wasn't a big one. Or did I? Did I? No, I had a flat TV. That wouldn't have come with a DVD player. Maybe I had a DVD player separate. Maybe. I wonder if the DVD players can be... attached via the internet. So I could have the DVD player here. That way I could put the discs in without having to move. I mean, you could argue that's what remote control's for. You could argue that having to get up every six hours isn't so bad. Yeah. Just trying to think what other shows I've seen. So there's The Sopranos, Breaking Bad, 
the wire. Hey, me, 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 me. There is... True blood. There is the... Game of Thrones. There is Boardwalk Empire. That was quite a good ending, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, I don't, not sure if I saw that coming. S kind of often I predict what's going to happen next. It's not like predicting as in some kind of spiritual power. I just, it just. I, all those years, I mean, I've had 50, 50 odd years of watching television and it's rare to, it's, it's rare to see something completely unique. It's, I mean, sometimes I'm surprised, I'm really surprised and I love it when that happens. And sometimes exactly what I think is going to happen happens. And it's still delightful because it's done in a way that perhaps is delightful, <laughs> maybe, or it's funny. Um, it's just little things. It's, it's, I like comedy, so I like the little the little touches that really make a difference. Uh, for example. Oh, what's one of the? It was just a chuck away line, but it's very funny. In Last Man on Earth, his wife Tandy, his wife says, um, they were talking about fears, about being scared of, a bit. Yeah, what's your biggest fear? And she said, my biggest fear is being scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like my biggest fear is being scared it's such a great line it's just bang and it wasn't even it was just like she said it and then they moved on with the next thing I like that stuff like that makes me it makes I think it makes it easier to watch it again in the future because I might have missed some of the stuff that was said It's possible. I remember when I watched the Airplane, I had to watch it a few times to get all the jokes. And even um, Life of Brian, sort of similar thing. And you might wonder, why am I putting those two films together? Well, let me tell you. I watched them the same day. I was at my uncle's house. And it was, I don't know what day of the week it was, to be fair. It was, it might have been a Saturday, I don't know. But we'd been out the night before and I got drunk. On red wine. And by drunk, I probably had a small amount of red wine, to be fair. I was probably 12, maybe 13. And I absolutely, I was ill, like really ill with it when I got home and I woke up and it was, you know, I had a hangover, probably the first hangover I'd ever had in my life. So I was just drinking lots of water and I was, yeah, because my uncle he had this really big house. He was successful. Had a shipping company, and he had this big house that was just near the beach. It was like a dirt track, and you walk run over that, and then the beach was there. It was, uh, yeah, it was a really lovely place, and it was lovely. And we was when you went into the house. I don't know if there were steps going up or not. I can't remember. But I know as you went in, 
to the right hand side there is the living room and if you turn and then straight ahead was the stairs that went up up turn left there was a room like another living room small well no small but it's a living room but also pool table with a hat a hatch is it a hatch like a hole in the wall which led to the kitchen the big old kitchen and I think the snooker table turned into a, a dinner table it's like a dining table slash snooker table and there was a jukebox in there as well I might get that wrong there might be in the snooker table and a dining table separate but I'm pretty sure it's the same same place the same thing it was kind of a little bit like Transformers, but instead of going from a robot to a car, it went from a snooker table to a table where you could eat. It's very much like the Transformers. Didn't talk. And I I just remember, because we used to go there every now and then, a visit. And on this occasion, I just went with my stepmom and my little brother. Just the three of us. And we was there for about a week. It was brilliant. I was pulled out of school. And if I'm correct. It was. The last. Yeah man. It was like the last. Was it the last week of term or. The last two weeks of term, something like that. And I was about to do a cake decorating course. It was some, some weird thing the school were doing where we could choose what we wanted to do and we did it for a week. Uh, and I chose cake decorating. And my friend was doing it and I was doing it. And it was all... I'm not saying there's a reason why it was all girls, but it was all girls. Except me and my friend, and we thought, yay, we get to eat lots of cakes. <laughs> That's probably what we thought. But for some reason, and I think there was a girl in the, in the class that I liked. So we were looking forward to doing it. I was more interested in the cake decorating, if I'm honest. Because I thought it would be really interesting to do. And then I got pulled out of school and I had to go and tell them that because there was like a family thing and I had to go, literally I think my stepmom came and got me. That was sort of the only time I was called out of school. Your mum's here. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, here we go. I'm going to get suspended or something. Expended. Su suspelled. And no. There was, I don't know what it was, but we went off and so we went there. That was her brother. That was my uncle, her brother. So that day, I come downstairs. No, I was downstairs. I was in the basement. That's where I was sleeping. And there was a bed down there. So I slept down there. Did I? Yeah, I did, yeah. And my uncle had all this stuff. He had loads of toys, loads of, like, Meccano, because he had, he had a couple of kids, or I think he had one, at least one kid. Maybe he had two. I think he had one. But he also had computers. He's really into computers. Uh, even then, he had Apple, Apple computers. And this was, what, 83? 83 time I mean blimey so yeah maybe 84 83 84 and he was really into computer games it was very very young at heart he just like he enjoyed himself he had liked to have fun worked hard and liked to have fun and he had all these computers so high tech compared to anything I'd ever seen before 
because I'd never really had a lot of contact with with computers. My dad did get a computer. He got a what was this? It was a top. It was a, the newest one at the time. But I had no interest in computers. I looked at it. I just thought, what's what's the point in this? And my other brother, my older brother, really took to it, and he started writing code. And it was because that's that's in the day where you had to learn code just to get something on the screen. You, you know, you, you couldn't just like now everything's there. It was, yeah, it was very different. Now I. Yeah, I remember my uncle had this game that was like a helicopter game and you had to go and save people. And it was, you had all these joysticks and I'd never seen anything like it before. And yeah, it was really cool. But I remember we were in the, I was in the, the as you go into the, the front door, turn left. If you turn right, that's where his daughter, she kept watching the Jungle Book over and over and over and over again. Like, could not watch it enough. And I don't know how old she was. Probably about the same age as my little brother. Maybe even younger. Because at that time my brother would have been about six. So she maybe had been about five. Obsessed with the Jungle Book. Had to watch it over and over again. My little brother was a bit like that with Anim Olympics. Which we had. It was uh, We had it on tape. If you've never seen it. You probably can watch it on YouTube. And it's just basically a bunch of animals do the Olympic Games. A cartoon. And there, there was this big box of videos, videotapes. And because I love videos, always loved movies, right from, well not always, but pretty much... Movie night was a thing that me and my family did. It's one of the things that I enjoyed most when I was a kid. When the whole family was together. I say that because my oldest brother was four years older than me. And he pretty much moved out when I was 14. I think, 13, 14, 14. My other brother moved out when I was about 14 because he was two years older. Or maybe 14 and a half. So, maybe 15. No, 14 and a half, 14. It got to the point where I was the only one at the to on the top floor. There was no one there anymore. It was just both the rooms were empty. My room was the only other room, and that's I was just there on my own. And then downstairs was the parents and my little brother had his room. It's very empty once the two of my brothers moved out. I kind of thought I'd like him them not being there. Not in a bad way, just because I hated them. <laughs> no, I didn't. It just, you know, just as a kid, I thought, well, it'd be n not so much of a wait for the toilet or for the bathroom and less noise, you know, generally. But it was weird because I'd been with them my whole life. And we've been through so much, and it was just, it was strange for them suddenly not there. Especially, like, there was, there was like a couple of years when I wasn't with my oldest brother. He lived with my nan and granddad. I lived in foster care with my other brother. 
So my brother, the, the one that was two years older than me, we were together all the way out to his 16th birthday or when he was 16 and a half or whatever. So that's a long time. And my other brother, other than, you know, so for 14 years of my life, I've been with him and for 12 years of my life, I've been with the other one. Yeah, when they were gone, when they, when they moved out, one I didn't see again for a long, long time. The other one I saw occasionally. I did see him around, and then I didn't see him again for a long, even longer. Yeah, I don't know what the point is. Oh yeah, the airplane and the life of Brian. So I love movies. So even when I went to Ireland, I went to Ireland and Andre, who was my friend who I went to stay with, him, him and his family home. When I first got there, I didn't go to his family home. I stayed with his sister and his sister's husband. I'm not even sure why. I think that was just a closer place to stay at. And then I went to his his parents the next day. So me and him stayed there in the spare bedroom and we shared a bed, which was weird because normally we used to make love in the floor. <laughs> no, we shared a bed and it was, it was strange. I mean, I've, uh, the only men, I've shared a bed with two men in the past or two males. The only males generally is my my brothers when I was younger I used to share beds with them but I shared a bed once with Andre because it was either that or sleeping on the floor he was awkward at times but hey and then I went to visit a friend in Wales and he got kicked out of his his, his wife kicked him out of the bed and I was in the spare bed so he just said well it's up to you I'm sleeping here. You can stay in the bed or you could go and sleep on the floor. So I stayed in the bed. It was very funny. <laughs> we just couldn't stop laughing. It was awkward. This is just a weird thing, really. Yeah, it's hard to. It's hard to laugh and be passionate at the same time. <laughs> And I forget his name, but his his sister's husband, Benny, I think it was. I don't know why I get that name from. He had this big box. I mean, I mean the actual cardboard box. He had a big box full of videos videotapes and he said oh choose one if you want to watch it and it's like there was it must have been at least 200 videos in this box oh it was lovely it was just a beautiful moment looking I don't think I even got to watch any of them but I got to look at all the different covers and yeah it was lovely. I really enjoyed that. And my uncle had the same kind of thing going on. But the difference with him is he had huge amounts of videos. He had like a whole library of videotapes. So what I did is I chose a couple. I think, I think he also had some in the other room. And... The Life of Brian and Airplane. I didn't know either of those movies. Which is weird. How would I... How did I not know about them? Bearing in mind, I used to go... We used to go to the video shop every weekend on a Saturday night. Pretty much for quite a long period of time. We'd all, as a family, would go and get 
probably three videos and we'd watched them and it was brilliant it was the only the only I don't want to say the only good thing that ever happened but it was the only like time that the family got on or us kids seemed to get on generally yeah so I watched I don't know which order I watched it so I had a hangover I don't know if I watched Airplane First or Life of Brian but I honestly it's probably the most I've ever laughed in my life I mean I might have still had some alcohol in my system to be fair but I laughed and laughed and laughed and I don't know if I was with anyone I can't remember I think I was on my own and I was watching it in that room and there was a TV in there and I was just sitting in a chair watching it and it was so funny so funny it was ridiculously hilarious and that's when I realised that it's, I kind of realised what I liked I knew what I liked I've always liked comedy but that was a different type of comedy there's absurd I quite like the absurdness especially of Monty Python a lot of it was just you know really silly and then there was airplane. Well, there's a lot of that. Well, most of it's silly, isn't it? It's it's funny. Yeah. Wow. I don't know why I'm thinking of that. There was something I was thinking about doing, like keeping track of memories. Because the other day I remembered something that I'd forgotten. But I didn't know I'd forgotten it. I suppose you don't know when you've forgotten something, do you? Otherwise you wouldn't have forgotten it. But I, I didn't, you know, it's one of those things that I, I can't remember thinking about before. And it just came to my mind. It's like, oh, I remember... When that spaceship landed on my house. Oh, I forgot about that. You know, it's weird. Very weird. I think it's possibly because when I do the Q&A Friday, I get asked questions and I don't always have the answers, to be honest. I think that's kind of evident. And I kind of wish I did. I'd like to be able to be a bit more. I don't know what the right word is. Um. Yeah, I'd quite like to. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it'd be ridiculous to think that I could remember every single thing that's ever happened because it's too long a period. It's it just is fifty four years. I've got a few memories from when I was little. I mean, like little, little, but not many. Not really. Now I'm thinking, I don't want to know. Uh, I'd, I'd, but then I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't really want to remember stuff. I do, I've got a vague memory of... My auntie... There was the period when my dad and his new wife, they came to the children's home and they started 
taken us back to their house for the weekend. And we did that for, I think, a couple of months before we moved in, like permanently. I don't know how long we did it for. It seemed like ages, but that's because I was tiny. I was only seven. So we... There was one weekend where... My aunt picked us up instead of my dad and his wife because it, my dad's wife was ill that weekend. So my aunt picked us up and took us to London and we stayed with her and her boyfriend who had a big beard as well. Unless that was my dad because he had a big beard. No. No. No, I'm pretty sure it was, a, it was our boyfriend. And my my aunt, she took us, she gave us a, a real proper tourist weekend away. It was great. She took us everywhere. Madame Two Swords, to the museums, to probably the art galleries, I don't know, but all, all the... The places that you go, the zoo probably, it, it just took us to all the main attractions in the centre of London. I even remember there was cock, there, there was people selling cockles, like and you eat them out with a little stick. And I remember my aunt saying, do I want one? And I said, no thanks. See, that's a memory, but it doesn't make a great story, does it? Necessarily. <laughs> and there was that time where we was on the bus and uh, we were coming back from the Tower of London and, and my aunt says, uh, Jason, your, your shoelace is undone. So I, I did my lace up. Again, not a great story. It happened, but is 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 it worth telling you? I don't know. Was it a waxworks, or was that Madame Tussauds? Tower of London. I'm trying to think what other places there was. It was a great weekend, though. It really was. And the weird thing, I've got this memory. It's a very strange memory. On a Sunday afternoon, during that period of us spending a weekend with my dad and his new wife, or our new mum, we would always travel back just after Rent a Ghost, or while Rent a Ghost was on TV. And that just shows you how long ago that was. Rent a Ghost. It was on a Sunday afternoon. Maybe it was in the evening. Maybe it was late afternoon. I've got no idea. I don't know what time we got back. And it seemed like a really, really long journey. But in reality, it wasn't at all. And I can tell you how many miles it was. What have I got there? Wow, I've got more. What is that? This, uh, I don't know what on earth that means. Uh, Ken posted Slippery Little Rattler. So I don't know what that was in ref reference to. I'm a little bit unsure about that. So I don't know. So let's have a look. So you've got... One hour and 15 minutes driving. 
7 hours and 23 minutes on a train? No. Or is that a bus? Really? No, it's because of this time of night. That's why. It wouldn't be otherwise. Because it's 8 minutes past 10. The last train's probably gone. So you'd have to wait till 6 in the morning till you get the next one or something like that. So it's an hour and 15 minutes. This is 1977. So the speed limits... It, things were different back then. You know, the, like the idea of wearing seat belts was almost laughable. Which is crazy when you think about it. But yeah, I don't think we wore seat belts. It was... My dad now he won't he won't even leave the driveway until everybody's got their suit belts on. Honestly, sometimes I just have to like say to him, "Dad, I'm on the phone. I'm not even in your town. Just you know, hang the phone up and go. I can't put the seat belt on." I think he might have problems. No, I, I, honestly, he won't. It's been like that for years. And it used to annoy me when I was younger. Like, I don't want the suit belt on. We're literally going just there. We're just driving around. Because it's a little town. And um, it's not an excuse, but it's just like, we're just literally just crossing the road. Put a suit belt on. I think it was the way he said it. He used to annoy me. He used to wind me up. The wrong way because I've never really enjoyed being told what to do yeah talking about that Mr. Submissive here he used to be submissive to every single dog that came his way now never well I say never rarely but he doesn't do submissive anymore He's changed as he's got older. He's he's got an attitude now, and being submissive is not part of his little plan. And I, I don't understand why. Why was? Well, I mean, it's been two years nearly since I've had him, but he was submissive earlier this year. It's not like it's like it's happened gradually. It feels like it's happened. Well, maybe it has happened gradually. Thinking about it, I suppose. It just doesn't seem that long ago that he was laying on his back. Being all gentle. And now he's snappy and growling at other dogs sometimes. He never used to be like that. He's very moody. And I don't know, is that possible? Could he be getting that from me? Is that possible? I don't know. I mean, we spend pretty much every second of the day together. So I wonder, is is he, is my moodiness rubbing up, rubbing off of, on him? Rubbing on off of him? Rubbing up him? Not in, in him. Rubbing off on him. That's it. Rubbing off on him. Is. The thing is. I know how to control it. So if I'm not in a like. Maybe a great space. I'll take him out for a walk. I'm, I'm not going to be. Shouting at people in the street. But he does. He has a proper go at people sometimes. Not people. Dogs. He loves people. But one of the things I liked most about him was how dog friendly he was. He's always been people friendly. I don't think he's ever met a person he didn't like ever. But dogs, it was all. It was pretty much the same with dogs at the start, and then and that has definitely gradually he's lost interest in large dogs. 
and now he's not a big fan of black dogs. Generally big black dogs. The problem is that nearly all dogs are bigger than him, apart from the ones that aren't. And today he even lunged and was acting all... I don't know what the right word is. Naughty, I think, towards another little dog. But then there's this other, there was another dog that's kind of similar to him. It's a similar breed, but it's a mixture. And it's bigger, like heavier. Same face though. Same eyebrows. Same frown. Same tail sticking up. Proud in the air. And they both take turns at growling at each other. <laughs> it's kind of funny to watch. How did I get onto that? I wonder how many memories there are. How many memories are there? I wonder. I don't know. Some of the memories do get a bit muddled. And I know that's natural for that to happen. It's a psychological thing that we it just, things get mixed together. Memories get mixed together sometimes. And that that's why I don't argue with people when it comes to something and they'll say, no, this happened. And I went, no, that happened. And it's no point. It's like, okay, believe what you want, that's cool. Even though I'm right, of course. <laughs> always, always right, me. I do remember with my friend downstairs, I said to him, I said to him something. I can't remember what it was. I was giving him some information. And he said to me, Jason... I told you that. And I started laughing. He might not have said Jason because he was in the room with me. There's no one else there. So he didn't need to say my name, did he really? But it's like so I told him something that he'd, that I'd got from him. that I And I was making out that I was saying it. And it was mine. <laughs> and it was funny. I can't remember what it was though. It might be funny if I could remember what the actual thing was. Was it to do with soup? Probably not. I've got soup cans that were in the cupboard so long that they opened on their own. Did you know that's what happens to soup cans? They open on their own. How weird is that? Because I had this idea that, you know, if you went to the Antarctic or if you went into a, a log cabin in the middle of the woods, you could find stuff that had been in there for 20 years, canned goods, and you could just open it up and eat it. Yum, 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 yum. Well, I don't think that's the case. There's an expiry date for a reason. That's what I, I remember B&M B &M Foods or B&M. Is it like a supermarket? It's like a cheap place where you get cheap stuff. And they sell out of date food. But they don't sell out of date. It's sell beef. They sell, uh, they sell, they sell it. Still. It's out of date as far as the sell before date, but it's not used before date. Does that make sense? So I didn't even realize there was a diff, there was two different things until that po point, I don't think. So sell before the 1st of December, use before the 5th of December. So they'd sell it, they'll sell it on the 2nd of December. 
and it had all kinds of like milk they had all kinds of stuff in there that was past its it wasn't past its use by date but it was past its sell by date and I always thought sell by date meant use by date but apparently it doesn't necessarily mean that we learn something new every day la 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 la, my sides are going grey. I wonder how long before I'm completely grey. Not, not, not really looking forward to it. Still haven't received my DNA test results. What's it been like? Seven weeks now? Eight weeks? It's a okay, you see. I don't understand. Weird. I want to know what I am. I want to know. I mean, I'm a mongrel. We're all mongrels, aren't we? But I want to know what kind of mongrel I am. What kind of mix? We're all a mix. I'm pure. No, ain't no such thing. Ain't no such thing as pure. I'm a pure breed. No, you ain't. No, 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 no. There's no such thing as pure breed. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, think about it. We all... Originally, if you go back far enough, we all come from the same place. And I don't mean my dad's balls. I mean, we all come from the same place. I said that really quickly so no one heard it. We all come from the same place is... No, Dad's got. I'm only really watching coconuts. So we got. If you go far enough back, that's the thing that I can't really wrap my head around. If you keep going back, you keep going back, you keep going back, you keep going back. Where does it end? When you go backwards. My dad. My dad's dad. My dad's dead, dad's. My dad's dead's dead. At no point could he not have had a father. And I mean, like, even if it was just a, a donor, it was still a father, you know, still like a, a biological father. So there's no point could there not be a biological father going backwards as far back as time for the existence of human beings we have to go back all the way to the existence of humans so my lineage it may stop here because I've not had no kids that I know of it might stop over the non and Vinny so my lineage stops when I'm when I stop but going back my lineage is thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. Maybe more. And so is yours. And so is yours. And so is yours. And so is yours. And some of you might, your lineage might carry on for thousands of years. Mine ends. I didn't reproduce. But for those that have, they may reproduce, they may reproduce, and that might carry on for thousands of more years. But going back, although some of us go on longer than others with the lineage, ultimately, everyone goes back to the same place. It kind of this how else could it be you know if you keep going back you keep going back you keep going back you keep going back it's like okay well you've got you've got 20 people in that part of the world 20 people in that part of the world I mean the whole world was just one continent at one point so 
there might be people that never met each other. But if you, if you go back in their history, their father, then their father, then their father, then their father. I'm going father, I mean, you can go mother, you could do the same that way, but just thinking from a, that perspective. They'd be somehow connected. Kind of had to be. And it's a mind boggle, isn't it? That we all have a lineage. We all have the same lineage, really. Okay, different. <laughs> different, but it all... It's kind of like... Hmm... If you look at a field, or look at a, look at a, a tree, and one seed can create a tree, which then has branches, and produces lots more seeds, and then those seeds are used to build more trees, build more trees, and you can end up with a whole forest from one seed. you could end up with a billion trees and you've got the youngest tree out of those billions of the youngest one and you know that even if that youngest tree doesn't produce anything its lineage goes back to the very first seed And then you might think, okay, well, but yeah, you've got that forest, but what about where that seed came from? And that's the thing, then that goes back to that. It's like the very first seed produced maybe two seeds and then it produced four. It's, I don't know, I think it's fascinating, especially as I've got no idea what I'm talking about. It makes it even more fascinating. It's a bit like perpetual motion. Is it perpetual motion? It's fascinating. So I'd love to know where I, how far I could go back. That would be interesting. That's why, in a way, Adam and Eve kind of made sense. Don't worry, I'm not getting all religious. But I'm just saying it kind of makes sense in a, in a, in a kind of weird kind of a way. Two people. Because, I mean, it's grim when you think of the reality of it. You know, their kids, you know, their son and their daughter, you know, I'm just saying it's, it's, I remember saying that to some Jehovah's Witnesses years ago, when I was, when I was a kid myself, and their argument was, yeah, but that was only to start with, and then, no, into only incest to start with it's like no but it was only to start with and then it it's like okay fair enough I had a friend one of my best friends was a Jehovah's Witness I didn't know I didn't know when I knew him when I was like well I was friends with him for a long time but we kind of drifted a bit but he lived just up the road from where my nan lived so I was friends with him and I went to school with him when I was about eight and his name was Andrew so I had two friends Andrew and Ian Ian was kind of my best friend and Andrew was he was ill a lot of the time because he had uh I think he had one kidney or something like that. So he was quite poorly. 
had a lot of time off school and so I used to look out for him and sort of see him go around his house and stuff and I kept in contact with him for a while after I moved out in fact I even his mum was a supervisor at a job I had as a cleaning job when I was about I don't know how old I was 19 so yeah like 11 years later I was doing a cleaning job and his, his mum was my supervisor and she kept telling me off for laughing wow anyway I've waffled on too much it's time to end the recording and I've not really said anything I mean normally I say so much and it all makes just such I don't know Just looking at the tail of the tape for Tyson against Jake Paul. 57 against 27. I thought it was 59, okay. Fights, 58 against 10. Wins, 50 against none. No, against 9. It's a very small screen. Losses, 6 against 1. No contests, two against none. Knockouts, 44 knockouts for Mike Tyson out of 50 wins. And six, no cont six for Jake Paul. 44 out of 58. 44 knockouts out of 50. So he had six fights that went the distance, and he won those. Oh, I can only remember three fights he went the distance with. So he went the distance six times. I don't remember him going the distance that many times I need to check that let's have a look I can't remember everything but I don't remember going the distance do 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 Right, so professional boxing record. He got five wins by decision and one by disqualification. Okay, so is that classed as decision? Because not, is it? Going the distance, if it's a disqualification. Because his last fight he lost, he was just under 39 years old. So it's sort of 19, 18, 19 years ago. Kevin McBride knocked him out. Danny Williams knocked him out the year before. And then Lennox Lewis knocked him out 2002. Evander Holyfield knocked him out 97. 
uh, 96, then he was disqualified 97. Buster Douglas knocked him out in 1990. So that's it. I will edit this in the morning. I will upload it in the morning. And that's it. So I'm going to go to bed in a minute. You go bed, bed. If we go bed, bed. Little grumpy bum. He's such a grumpy bum. Thank you for listening. This has been just nonsense, hasn't it? I'm going to call this nonsense. Utter nonsense. Thank you for calling. Thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Be gentle with yourself. Lots of love. Bye, bye, bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of 
CD players. Press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then... Even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. You 
And if I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation 
This allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. With a joyful heart. Time seems to just drip by so very slowly relaxed so 
so deeply peaceful. Completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free noticing that. Your mind has slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs
feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper. Noticing the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower.
very slow. in your stomach your back Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine from your brain all the way down the middle of your back sending and receiving millions of messages every day Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more.
joy. The space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice Forehead and your eyes. in a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
atmosphere. of notice. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Total peace, Go.
होते हैं body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, 
replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come now I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead 
Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more relaxed and calm. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. experience in the back of your neck, moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and 
as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. The spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling calm, and that feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders, that sense of relaxation, not just 
traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing, and you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your arms and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so Focusing now on your hands, a sense of real peace and just 
just seems to feel so familiar and your hands relax deeper it feels tips to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees so relaxed 
muscles and your shins completely So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step represents...
presents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may Just allow yourself to do that. Now, focus in on your eyes. I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one.
side. Counting down from ten to one. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there, like you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? Try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, will you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs? Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. every number that I count down. Ten. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap be 
comes. So there's that gap of calmness, of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it removes those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the, the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, 10, 9, 7, 6, 3 How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. And we're just going to start with 
focusing on your thighs. Of course, it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs, basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip and then goes down to your knee joint. Now this is a big area. The area is very strong, probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives how much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Gains such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily. I'll speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason it's then that I realise how much it does you know the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort 
that is you focus on your knees. Regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on the thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you can notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, the shins and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that, because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. It does so much great work, supports us, supports our body for a lifetime, helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. your shins there to protect your lower legs shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. And I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. We've been focusing on your ankles. The 
is still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course there's the muscles, the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. Sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries, there's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course. To be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your, your knee, you know the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, 
healing, a loving way. Because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, the idea of having love for your legs showing appreciation for your thighs wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly. Your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight in these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, my feet also go. My toes clap. They're so happy. The legs really are amazing. And I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably, possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to 
just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that journey of comfort. feel it in my hips, my hips feel really loose, and also in my lower back as well, my lower back really feels, it feels stretched, even though I'm just sitting in a chair, and there's no stretching, as far as I'm aware that I'm doing, it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. One. 
as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises a sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process. Something that's easy accomplish. In fact, it's almost, you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep, depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier
easier. You find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually relaxing each muscle and just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say.
is slowed right down, sinking deeply into relaxation. As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts, which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, nothing you needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your hands, Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one. You can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands. Each night. 
starting with number eight. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. stuff. You 
take that away, which is what we do, what we do now. We have to use a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have 
the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier when sleeping is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done You know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. You were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep, healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try and do this, stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within Continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
と、あんな、ネガティビティ、ディスッペア。That you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind. To the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when. You choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, all that healing energy spreading through your body. Spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't Doesn't, des- doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Which makes room for more comfort, more healing. Relaxation, more peace. It feels nice, doesn't it? To just Down to one, you can continue to relax if you choose. You can drift to sleep, with every number you hear me say. Is relaxed, or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. For now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out Inside your body, all of them not. 
versus all of the flats. relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and your mind starts to drift listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and your Focusing on a different part of your body. And you find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. And you give your alert again to your voice focusing on. Because that drifting is basically you in your body in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep. And that's the last you remember 
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you have many little fingers and little bits and you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now and then you'll seem to just melt into one where does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on your knees. And just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
letting you go. go of everything everything I'm going to stop now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported, and you feel comfortable, and the breathing is really easy, and you feel, you feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness, because I'm a professional, and this is a therapy session, so none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, and move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face just so you can feel my hands so you can become accustomed to them and now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down to the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands and 
And this is a very trusting situation, really, because our necks are so fragile. And to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people. Which is why massages are quite good. Because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust. To feel peaceful and calm. And as I massage the sides of your neck gently. Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck, of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. And the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. You decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table. Just to give you a little bit of a stretch. But very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, really 
get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial for the relaxation. the muscles in your shoulders. And now as we move down your arms, you do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to still be attached, and I just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. your right hand, just holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. same time, pressing down and massaging each finger, and then starting to massage the palms of your hands, just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently, and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. feel safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers. Massaging the palm of your left hand. And it feels so, so relaxing. So comforting. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with a really big beam area at the top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back and massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back side inwards, so massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle and yet firm as you choose and eventually you get to the spine you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back do that a few times. Sometimes we can choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine and just, just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension opening up your body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. And now I'm going to move 
to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I will pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yeah, lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massaging that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area is muscle tissue um, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from your chest. So it's all connected, your chest and your back connect together. We're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue 
the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now move up the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where you're opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands fingers digging deep to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe Lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, gently but firm enough so you don't tickle, and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently, massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, 
each one individually. And move them over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, taking them down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience for having your feet massaged, feel Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. massaging around your scalp, massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently, the sides of your neck. chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, you're going to 
collarbones from the side of the collarbone. Just let it imagine the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. This is quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And then moving down again. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually the hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. It can feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, so just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply calmly you feel loose you feel free there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now I'm 
inside your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins. Put the pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot gently massaging the whole of your foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. Just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down.
imagine that candle in front of you. I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big blow, it's just a gentle say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out as well and as we move down the numbers the fire in yourself feeling more and more relaxed as you moved to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle sounds where you are, so you be aware of those sounds for the moment, feeling, start to just not even notice them. the sounds of the birds, those forests that begin that likes to say hello sometimes, and as your plane goes by, it could be traffic and trains in the distance. seems important whatsoever. The more candles you blow out, the less important anything is. The more candles you blow out, 
sensing so simple what would be the start by introducing the first Positivity grow within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding.
shadows, thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. kind of waits for you to lead the way, waits for your permission, and when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely. body just follows. It's all like a breath of relief. Oh, let us now relax. That feeling at the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick the shoes off and that feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting now like that, your body knows body has been given permission from you, because it's a mindset, and your mind feel prepared to let go of everything, and to just completely allow all the stress of the body to evaporate. and just gradually
gently vanish. Almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you probably haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And it's almost like if you could see the, the little wind-up knob that's used just going the opposite way that it would use to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not may not actually be aware of what we mean, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, feels so nice 
Scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, and notice to be in touch with how you actually feel in this
spirit so we start off by focusing on the hands just be aware of the hands I'd like you to move your hands around just maybe you bring it all to a little Just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. Very, very gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. raising your eyebrows as it stretches at the tops of your eyes, perhaps squeezing your eyes, scrunching up your eyes to see if you really get in touch. Focusing on your thighs. And I'm just going to ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Muscles that are caught in the ear to the side of your neck and also lead to the top of your back, the shoulders and the shoulders. And as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you were looking up. Maybe moving your head down 
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually, it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretched. a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. make up the larger movements, which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings of just thinking and thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs, the arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins, Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing in one. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, like you tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. And the lower back. side of your lower back. Recourse that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when you focus on that part, and I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently. seem to happen the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back comes along Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, as a female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, or might not that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing in and it stretches my chest and my back at the same time and it feels it feels okay bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back that connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes. to do that and if you aren't doing it 
Teresa, uh, when she gave her parents five rebuttals, made the baby gentle with herself. Peaceful is your mind right now. There's nothing to think about. You just want
This is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just drive slowly.
thank you so much for being with us. Pray that our food might be of some help. Yes. stress and anxiety that you might have, the evening, the evening, yes, the evening comes and the fullness of that is just releasing. that the stomach is not going to relax, as can be the tension in the body, the plenty Sense of kindness, 
ikutse amaxhoba iwabo ngokwamanzi alex owayengakho ophezu kwamaxhoba wasanda ngokwamanzi futhi wasebukisa Ese ezi kumanda ngazi kuma kumbili Wazi Ezi kwen funda ukuzazi Wazi Amanda angapu mili Ngazi kumbili Ezi hasayi usanti nikolaus Wela Wazi Amanda Ngazi kwen ukuma tano kumbili Pesa A, ubale ikikazi ukuze ikikazi sikazi kulayo. Umfunda ayo ubalindeli. Wazi, o, ngazi kuzo, umfunda ayo ubalindeli. Wazi, sati, ngazi kumanda usanti ngazi kwaza kumanda. Ngapu A. Kukwankisi mwakhaya. Ukuzi kumahaya, ukuzi kumahaya, wazi. Ukuzi wait. Ezi kwazi kumahaya. Ukuzi kumahaya kumahaya. Wazi kwaza wazi kumahaya. Ukuzi ya ukuzi ya kwazi. Ngumatulindi kwa kwazi Angapezu kwa kwazi Angapezu kwa kwazi Kwa futhi ngusubu ya kwazi Ngazi sayi kwazi Ngazi sayi kwazi Ngazi kwazi kwa kwazi
start focusing on it and substantially add that kind of like work to it or effort you know put a bit of thought into it and paint it and draw on it and then just tell it that you feel good about that moment and you feel good about that kind of drawing and or the tension that you can let go and then just be able to focus on it